Hey everyone, so today, we're gonna try out the WAN 2.2 Fun Control and InPaint model using the native Comfy UI nodes. We talked before about using the WAN video wrapper, and then shortly after that video was posted, the Comfy UI team actually updated Comfy UI to support the WAN 2.2 Fun models, including the InPaint and Control models for video generation. As you can see in this blog post, they announced it, and there are even two workflows you can try using the native nodes in Comfy UI. And if you scroll down, there are some demos you can play around with, complete with input videos for in painting. There are also two images provided, so you can use them however you want. Set one as the start frame, one as the end, or even reverse them. Just play around and see what you get. Today, we're gonna test this out with the native nodes and compare the performance to what we did before with the video wrapper. We'll also see how we can optimize it and maybe make it a bit better. And of course, we'll go over how to use it locally while still being able to generate videos you can actually use. Now, this includes the start and end frame thing we've done before using the WAN 2.2 base model. Remember, that's where we generate videos from first and last frames. As we've shown in previous videos, we can create some pretty nice animations just by defining those start and end frames. And I've even integrated the flux context into this kind of workflow, starting with a single start frame, then generating our own end frame and using that to produce the full video. Animations like that work really well with the base model in WAN 2.2. But now, we're going to try it with the fun control and in paint model and see what the difference is, or if anything's actually improved with the WAN 2.2 fun control in paint model. First, head over to the Comfy UI blog post. In the Get Started section, you'll see they mention downloading or updating to the latest version of Comfy UI. So make sure you do that. Seriously, don't come into the comments later saying, oh, I'm missing custom nodes, or some nodes are missing. Anyway, moving on. There are browse templates for both the fun control and fun in paint workflows, and they're available under the WAN 2.214B file called fun in paint and fun control templates. Once you've updated your comfy UI, you should be able to go to the browse templates, head to the video section, and see something new the fun 14B and 14B fun in paint options. Today, we're mainly focusing on the fun in paint one because we already played around with fun control last time. Now, for the models, this part is pretty easy. First, there's the official model way. You can download from the Alibaba PAI WAN 2.2 fun repo. Go to the file versions, grab the high noise and low noise models, and rename them, because by default, they're just Diffusion PyTorch model files. So rename them before putting them into your models folder. Another option is the Comfy UI Hugging Face repo where they've compressed the fun control and fun in paint models into FP8 and BF16 safe tensors files. Just check how strong your GPU is. If it can handle BF16, go for that. Otherwise, stick with FP8. Same as usual, depends on your hardware. You'll need the fun control high and low noise models and the in paint high and low noise models. Make sure you download the ones that are paired with the same quantized size. This time, I downloaded the Fun in Paint FP8 version to test in Comfy UI. Just wanted to see if a lower quantized model can still run something as cool as the Alibaba PAI repo version. All right, so let's jump into Comfy UI. Again, this is the workflow I've shown in previous videos. The base model WAN 2.214B setup, which includes the first and last frame interpolation using native nodes. It works just fine. But now, with Fun Control and Fun In Paint, there are two new nodes we can play with. I just downloaded the workflow template from the Comfy UI blog post, and you get this file. When you look at the Fun Control and Fun In Paint example workflows, you'll see they're split into two big groups. The top one includes the Light X2 V LoRa models, which help speed up the steps and reduce generation time for video. The bottom one, which is bypassed by default, doesn't use the LoRa models. So basically, everything's the same, connected to positive and negative prompts going into the K sampler, except the top one also connects the Light X2 V LoRa model from the WAN 2.2 image to video model. Let's try the WAN 2.2 Fun in Paint. Now we need to pick the right model files. I'm using the Fun in Paint FP8 version, so I'll select that. And remember, 
use the matching high and low noise models. Both in FP8, don't mix quantize sizes, that might not work properly. For the clip loader, same thing, I'm using UMT5XXL, and this time, I'm sticking with FP16 like usual, and the WAN 2.1 VAE model files. For the LoRa loader, we'll use the default WAN 2.2 image to video light X2 VLoRa model. I already have that downloaded just under a different name because I grabbed it earlier from the official Light X 2V repo. So I'll pick that one for both high and low noise models. Just make sure it's correct. Next, let's set up the start and end frames. With the fun in paint to video node, you connect both the start and end frame images, convert them to latent data, and pass that into the K sampler. This is different from the first last frame to video node we used with the base model. So these are two separate nodes. I'm not sure why they didn't just combine them into one custom node to make it easier. Anyway, for this test, I'll use the same image as the start frame, and for the end frame, I'll make her rotate, like she's walking around or turning 180 degrees. I'll copy this part too, since it's super convenient. The flux context lets us take one start image and generate the end frame ourselves. So I'll plug those two images into the workflow. In my setup, I'm not using the load image node anymore. You guys, if you're new to Comfy UI, feel free to follow the template as is. But I like to customize. I'm using an any switch node for the start image because sometimes I want to use a file path and sometimes I just want to quickly pick an image for a demo like this. So that goes to the start image and the generated output goes to the end image. I've also added a bypass group here so I can toggle whether I'm generating the end frame or just running the video. That way, I don't waste compute every time I want to generate a new video. And honestly, I don't think I need this lower group of nodes. It's basically the same as the one above, just missing the LoRa loader. So I'm gonna delete it. Doesn't matter to me. There's just a guide and download links here for you to play with. If you missed any files, you can check those out too. So I'll plug everything in. First, I'm going to disable the WAN 2.2 group because I want to generate the end frame first. Once I'm happy with it, I'll move on to generating the video. Okay, got the end frame generated. My prompt was simple. Just rotate the character 180 degrees. So she starts facing one way and ends up looking the other direction. Now, I've also added this fast bypass enabler. It acts like a switch. You can turn it on and off. Once you like the end frame, just enable it and run the process again. It'll use both images as start and end frames. Now, the video generation finishes pretty fast, because by default, the workflow uses low resolution. So either change the dimensions, or just test it like this. It still works, and it's super quick. I got about 17 seconds for high noise, and 16 for low noise. Two sampling steps, plus the Light X 2V LoRa and small dimensions, really speed things up. Great for prototyping, perfect for previews. And as you can see, it does follow the start and end frames, but the motion feels a little flat. Less exciting, less dynamic than the base model. With the 14B1 2.2 base model, the character doesn't rotate like a robot, she actually moves naturally. You can see movement in her hair, her shoulders, like a real person turning. But here, with fun control, it feels more like a doll on a rotating platform. It's a different vibe. Anyway, let's try something else. I'll add the video combine node and use frame interpolation to double the frame rate, going from 16 FPS to something smoother. Let's see how that looks. Okay, better, not as robotic. Now it's getting closer to the base model's natural rotation. So yeah, you can achieve a similar effect with fun control too. Performance-wise, it's pretty much on par with what I got using the WAN video wrapper, maybe even a little faster on my current setup and hardware. So, is the fun in-paint model really necessary? Well, honestly, both fun control and fun in-paint are still pretty experimental. Like I said in the last video, this is more of a preview. Control and in-painting are just two features included. And honestly, most people making short video scenes like a few seconds or even 10 plus seconds, are already using control nets and first, last frame in painting. So this is just a sneak peek into what's possible with the WAN Video AI model right now. I'd say the performance is pretty solid, especially with the Light X2V speeding things up. 
the character stays consistent, coherent, no broken parts between frames, still meets the WAN AI video standard. Here's another example, first and last frames, but this time with a zoom out and some subtle movement. You can even change the character's position and adjust the camera for more natural motion. Makes the whole video feel more complete. Yeah, honestly, this stuff is pretty simple to do now in AI video generation. Using first and last frames doesn't need much explanation anymore. Just try it, play around, and you'll get the hang of it. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.